Hello, my name's Mike Davis, and with this set of record power carving tools and six simple techniques, I'll have you carving in no time. These significant six techniques focus on how to hold your carving tools correctly so that they can be used effectively, with confidence, and most importantly, control at all times. Now let's begin with the height of your bench. First and foremost, you must ensure that the bench or work surface is firm and sturdy. The ideal height for the surface of your project should be the same height as your elbow when you're standing nice and tall. And this will prevent you from bending over your work or straining your back. Now Record Power also offer this extremely versatile carver's clamp, which can be fixed to your work surface with this clamping mechanism. And once fitted securely, your work can then be fitted to this plate, which can be raised in height, rotated or angled. Best of all, you can fit that system to any work surface that's stable. Okay, so I'm gonna demonstrate on this piece of pine it's been plain nice and flat and clean. So let's get into these techniques. And the first two techniques that I want to show you will help you to hold the carving tools correctly. The first position is called the pinch position. So let's start with tool reference number four. And I can check this tool against our chart. Okay, so that's tool reference number four. So pinch the blade between your finger and your thumb. And don't worry if you're left or right-handed, just hold the tool in whichever hand you feel comfortable. Now this position is used for fine work or for setting in a cut, which is where the shank of the carving tool is held vertically at 90 degrees to the timber, that's setting in a cut, or your fine work where it's at an angle. And when I talk about shank, I'm referring to the entire length of steel between the cutting edge and the handle. So let's look at some examples of setting in a cut. Pinch position, the shank is vertical to the timber surface, gentle arm weight, setting in a cut. And now how the pinch position is used just to cut towards it. Can you see that? A nice clean cut, nice and gentle. There we go. The second technique is called the fist position. And for this one, let's select tool reference number five. There we go. So make a fist around the shank of the tool. And that's gonna, well, it's just gonna give you a bit of a firmer grip. Now notice you should have around 25 to 30 millimeters of blade exposed from your little finger. It's important to remember that that blade is always next to your little finger. You don't want to hold it like this, fist position, blade next to your little finger. So can you see how this would be used? It's just giving me a little bit more grip. Now for both of those two techniques, it's absolutely essential that you anchor the hand that's holding the carving tool. And this forms technique number three. The hand holding the tool, or the arm of the hand holding the tool, is always in contact with the timber or the workbench. And this will mean that you have control of the blade at all times, and it's gonna prevent you from slipping. So can you see how this works for the pinch position? My hand is anchored to the bench for the pinch position. Now see how it works for the fist position. The arm of the hand that's holding the tool is in contact with the workpiece. It's anchored, I can't slip. Now technique number four is the tapping technique. And this involves a combination of the fist position and anchoring. When motivating the carving tool forward, it's essential that we only ever use controlled arm weight. Never apply body weight behind the tool because you could lose control of where that razor sharp cutting edge is going. So let's select tool reference number seven for this. Now this is the biggest gauge in your set. Tool reference number seven. 
So when using the tapping technique, hold the tool in the fist position. Establish a fixed position with your anchoring hand and tap the handle of the tool with your mallet. Now, this mallet is made of beech. It's a nice, dense hardwood, and you'll notice that it's round, so that you have a good striking surface, whichever way you hold the tool. Now, in my view, this is an ideal weight for most carving applications. So you can see that after each tap, the cutting edge returns back to its original position. Take a look. After each tap, the blade of the tool is motivated forward, it's returning back to its original position. Basically what it means is that you can apply an increased force, but you've still got control at all times. I'm only going to take a very small piece of timber away. hitting the handle quite firmly with the mallet. But look at the control that I've got. I can work across the grain. If I want to remove large pieces of timber, I can do it, but I've always got control with that anchoring hand. The fifth technique is most easily explained with the use of an analogy. If you were cutting a loaf of fresh bread, and you only apply a downward force on the knife, then the resulting cut would be very ragged and torn. As soon as you employ a sliding motion, then that cut becomes more effective. And this principle applies exactly the same to the carving tool. Now, as you motivate the cutting edge forward, try to include a sliding motion too. Now, can you see how the entire length of the cutting edge is being used? Can you see how I'm sliding the blade as I motivate it forward? So once you've mastered those foundation five techniques, well, there's just one more for you. And this is why it really doesn't matter if you're left or right-handed. Now, when carving to the left-hand side of the bench, you should hold the carving tool in your left hand and vice versa for the right. Now, this is definitely going to feel awkward at first, but please stick with it and it'll soon become second nature. The most important aspect here is it prevents you from having to contort yourself in uncomfortable positions or from constantly having to turn your work around, relocate it. So can you see how this works? Carving to the left hand side of the bench. I'm holding it, holding the carving tool in my left hand. Carving to the right hand side of the bench. Hold the carving tool in my right hand. So now let's take a quick look at the cutting directions required when carving a piece of timber. If you can imagine, a piece of timber is like a bunch of long drinking straws. Let's use this example to explore the various cutting directions of timber. Now, if I want to round this corner over, well, I would need to cut in this direction so that I push the short fibers against the long. Now, this is what would happen if I went in the other direction. If I cut long fibers to short, then they'll break out. Now, which way would I need to cut for this corner? Short to long. Same on this corner. And same here too. So you can see that's why it's necessary to use both hands to carve effectively. Let me show you on this piece of timber here. All right, so carving left hand side of the bench. So I hold the tool in my left hand. I want to round this corner over here. So I'm gonna cut these short fibers to long and the long fibers of the timber will support the cut. Can you see? If I wanted to round this edge over, but I cut long to short, take a look at what happens. 
you see how it just splits. So on this side of the bench, short to long, hold it my right hand because I'm going to carve to the right side of the bench and short to long. Right hand carving to the right hand side of my bench. Okay, can you see how that works? So in the Foundation Skills DVD, I'll show you the perfect beginner's project that'll put those significant six techniques to work. It'll get your carving in all directions, and you'll end up with a delicate little design that can be used to decorate a larger project or simply to make a little gift. And don't forget, you can have access to a growing number of tips, techniques, plans, and projects at the Record Power website. So until next time, happy carving.